We gotta think about our our passengers a little bit. I mean, we're fake united, not real united. So we gotta give them a little bit of thought here. Do 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 do. All right. Let's finish this. Now, if I understand correctly, the standard way to do this would be to engage the brake again, bring your throttle to about 60% of N1 over here. You let it stabilize. Oh, apparently I didn't actually have the brake on. You let it stabilize, and then once you're good, then you go and you bring yourself up to take off thrust. Now, this is one of the interesting things. Technically, if I could put the throttle to the max, it'll be 101%, and the temperature there will start to turn yellow from overheating. So, um, I think a bit of a warning. So, I think you would do almost but not quite 100 is the true thing. And I'm going to try to rotate at about 160, which is probably overkill, but... Um, because I think a lot of the times, despite, depending on the weight, sometimes you can get a, a V rotate above 160, but for most of your typical weight, and we're not super overloaded, it'll probably be more in like the 145 range, but better to rotate too late, unless we run out of runway, than too early, and then we stall out. So here's our 150. Again, we could probably go now, but I'm going to go to 160. I'm going to pull back. I think you pull back like 8 degrees at V1 and then you pull a little bit more. So we're going to try to bring it up to about 100 or 15 degrees. Speed is still climbing hugely, hugely. We can confirm positive rate of climb. Let's pause for a second. So we confirm positive rate of climb. We bring up the landing gear at this point. Um, as soon, I, I, I don't know if you do it at the same time or as soon as this is confirmed to be up, then we can consider to engage some of the autopilot at this point. Um, I'm not going to do it quite yet because what I want to do right now, I'm, I'm too high up in pitch and you can see the markers over here. I'm going to try to center up on the autopilot indicator and then engage it um, so that the autopilot doesn't kick in anything awkward. But it's trying to encourage us to turn to a proper 5-7 uh, heading over here. Uh, again, we're supposed to follow that 5-7 until we cross 1,100 feet. Um, and then presumably we'd get some vectors instructions at that point. But we're going to keep flying it. Uh, for now, we are capped at 5,000 feet over there. Um, so that's going to be okay. But yes, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, unpause, bring it down to sort of point the right way. We're still climbing. We're not climbing as much. You know what? I'm going to keep it locked at 10. Yeah, we're getting warnings because we're getting too low here. So we're going to keep on the midpoint. I'm going to keep it about 10 degrees. Our speed is still climbing, which is exactly what we're looking for. Actually, what we need to do is we need to kill the flaps by one at this point. There's 1100, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and straighten out a little bit now. And I'm feeling very comfortable at this point to turn on the autopilot. There we go. So it's now taken over. It's going to keep us on the 5-7 heading. And what it's going to do is now it's going to pitch up to try to uh, maintain that. I'm going to bring the thrust down. Oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to do the, f the flaps until our thrust is our normal climb thrust. Now, on this plane, again, I don't have the information for what our proper thrust levels for climb is going to be. I'm going to put it about 95%, which is higher than you tend to do it. Let me get rid of the last flap here. Um, higher than you tend to do it, but I gotta say, just to maintain our straight and level flight once we get to our flight level, we're gonna stay at, at or very close to about 90% power just to maintain that. So we're still climbing here, we're coming at 5,000 feet. I'm gonna say this, we've now been cleared to climb to our flight level at this point, so I'm gonna say thank you very much. So we're gonna do that, still staying on this. So by setting to VNAV, you can see that the speed information is gone from this window. And the reason for that is because it's now feeding it directly from the FMS, which is gonna be trying to keep 250, which you can confirm over here. We still have the height set to uh, 5,000, um, and we could lock in there, but we've been cleared to our flight level. So it should, it should be ignoring this. Whatever I have punched in here, I'm actually surprised it doesn't just say 5,000. Uh, but we're okay. And let's say we've now been told, we've been instructed to fly directly to mobile at this point, rather than any other kind of vectors. So I'm going to say thank you very much, and we're going to do a direct intercept towards mobile over here. Okay, we got to clear the error. Error by clicking this button. What it's doing is it's pasting this. Uh, cancel the mods here. Clear everything. By hitting this, it's going to paste this in there, and then I can put it in for direct, and then hit execute. So now our flight plan should turn. Oh, I need to put on LNAV. Thank you very much. Now it's going to turn to head directly to mobile while still climbing. Okay, no, it is. How do I change this to, like, take the VNAV from the thing? There we go. Turn off the altitude hold. Now it's put in the 3500 and it should start to climb again. Okay, there's a bit of an oops there. I probably could have manually changed it to 35,000 first. 
or toggle this on and off, maybe, and it would have forced reading from the FMS. So now we're cleared up to 35,000. We are making a right turn towards mobile as we climb above 5,000 over here. And there we go. We are in the clouds. It is a bit of an overcast day. There's actually two cloud levels. Um, and again, the about a seven knot wind at ground level. But I think it's going to climb to almost 20 knots by the time we get to 10,000. Um, so it's going to be maybe a little rockier, but it should be okay. Not much of a view right now while we're in the clouds. It's a bit unfortunate. I often like to pl fly on just a clear day just because it's a lot prettier. Oh, what we need to do as we're flying through a cloud is we need to turn off the beacon here. I think. I mean, you don't have the beacons on in a cloud because it can blind you. Um, Anti-collision beacon right here. And I think you only need that on the ground as well. I'm not sure. And we're going to do that. So here we are. This is uh, right over here. That's mobile on the map. And that is, uh, what was that? Rickham. Rickham over here. And there's Kepta. So we're just turning towards mobile at this point. So big turn, but that's okay. So our speed is dropping here. Oh! First of all, I never turned on the auto throttle things. Only flap transit. Yeah, I should have turned on the auto throttle, first of all. But I'm not sure why it decided. Maybe because it started flying level at some point, it changed it. We are, we are flattening out in a way that is very unappealing here. I've made a horrible, horrible mistake. But once our speed gets up, then we should start to climb. So we've got level change. we got our throttle at 90. It's a little high. I don't know how it dropped down to 30% or where why it did that. Probably when it started flying level, something weird happened. So we're not climbing very well right now, which is not good. But there we go. So now we're hitting our target speed. It's pitching up a little bit. It is clearly windy. Look how much it's having a hard time keeping the, uh, the lateral... Um, line over here. But yeah, now we're climbing once more. Whew! Okay. Well, that was double plus on good. I think what we can do is we can retract all of our landing lights. And we'll turn the rest of the lights off when we hit 10,000 feet. That's also when we'll turn off the seatbelt sign. We can make various announcements at that point. So I'm going to keep this climb power over here. I think that in practice we could do a fair bit lower, but that's all right. So now we've just hit our waypoint. So if we look here, we're now flying towards Rickham, over here. So what was it? It was, um... Or we're, we're, we're hitting... Uh, no, what, what was it that we were at before this? Mobile, that's what it was. We hit mobile, now we're turning towards Rickham. I actually like the legs of you the most, because it does tell you all the distances over here. So that's okay. Oh yeah, there's mobile. That's where we are. This is where we're flying to. We still have the 250 knot speed limit right now. Um, we are trying to ascend to flight level 350, which is going to take a while to get there. Our engine thrust is actually working properly now. Yeah, you're supposed to turn this on before you take off. So uh, that was a... oops. Alright, so as we do this, we can check... Well, actually, we could have done this earlier. You know, some of our after takeoff um, lists, packs, auto, that would that was all set. It should all be okay. I don't think we've done anything up and off. Flaps up. There's no lights. We did confirm that earlier, but not really. Our altimeters are set correctly. Um, yeah, sure. I'm sure everything is fine. Could possibly go wrong. So we're now crossing 10,000. So we can feel free to turn off all of our lights. Actually, I guess that was the strobe. I don't know. Off there? Who knows? I don't know anything. Take off light, or um, taxi lights off. Sure, that's fine. Um, and the other thing we can do is we can set the fasten seatbelt sign to automatic. I actually don't know what automatic does. <laughs> I could just turn it off completely, but it might automatically turn on in right correct situations. I assume that would be the case, but I don't know. We're 10 nautical miles away from Rickham. We're still... We're not climbing that quickly. Oh! Oh, because as we crossed... Of course, as we crossed past 10,000, then our target speed now changed to 290 knots instead of 250. So we leveled out a bit to let our speed increase. And now that we're there again, we are pitching up once more to continue that climb over here. Feeling good about that, so... Um, there's one of the reasons, like, the speed limit's below 10,000. There's a few different reasons, but one of them is actually, I think, a lot to do with noise. Because um, there's a lot of noise abatement rules. Uh, 
everywhere. Basically, every airport's got them. Uh, some of them involve takeoff times and landings. For Toronto, Pearson, I don't think anything can take off later than, I believe, 1 a.m., and then can't start operating again until, I think, 6 a.m. I think there's a five-hour window where there are no planes allowed to take off at all. Um, I think arrivals... I don't know about arrivals, but I think, I think arrivals are a no-go as well, just because of overnight noise rules. Um, and in addition to that, there's all sorts of, like turning altitude speed restrictions for some sound issues as well so we're going to keep this at 95 for now for our climb speed um, i mean it seems to work very well i don't know if it's realistic or not again can't go too low you need a fair amount of climb power on this twin jet to um to really give it a go uh, there's a plenty of planes that are like or your takeoff power is 92 your climb power is like 83 percent or something i don't think this is one of them at least not in this uh this x-plane version over here so two nautical miles away, there we go, from Rickham, we're going to start making our turn towards Kepta, and that will complete our standard instrument departure phase of this flight. And we'll just be free to follow our flight plan as filed. Of course, we would still be contacting Tower along the way, um, we'd be directed as we change from one sort of, um, I, mean, I don't know if Tower would be the right term anymore, um, the area control. Uh, we'd be directed from one area control to another as we got in and out of range of different things, um, but mostly just confirming that everything is A-OK. -okay. So we're going to continue this video until we get to 18,000 feet, uh, at which point we will be switching over to the standard um, altimeter reading, because um, that's our transition. I don't know if it'll do that automatically here. I wonder if it'll do that automatically. The idea being... Um, because you can't get the same sort of accurate uh, um, air pressure readings and different things, especially as you cross from one zone to another flying very quickly, everyone just sets their altimeter to the same pressure regardless of the real air pressure out there because you're no longer concerned with your actual height above the ground. You're concerned about having a standard altimeter reading to ensure that you don't smack into another plane because you both thought you were flying at different altitudes where in fact you were flying at the same altitude. So by sending them both to 2992, then you will all reflect the exact same altimeters, which again, may or may not be super accurate from the ground, but is going to be what you need to avoid collisions. So we are 10 nautical miles away from Kepta over here. We'll be executing a, or no, Kepta is here. We're going to be continuing the same vector of 124 to Vimpa over here, um, at which point we will be making a right turn toward Avon. 15,000. What's cool is when we do get descent information, and that's where we're going to be coming in. Um, oh, interesting. It's actually giving us some descent info already, which seems a little bit odd. Why would it include the top of flight? That's curious. I don't know what that is, why it starts the descent, even though we have no descent information. We could program that in. I mean, I don't know when you would, in fact, in practice, reliably get your here's where you're landing information. Um, you know, how far ahead of time you would, or if it would come later. We could punch that in now. We could assume a certain something about our landing and where things are going to go. We can, uh, we can open up our nav charts here, and let's take a look at KJFK over here. So it has, um, it has a number of runways to choose from. Um, let's assume that the wind is still coming out of the north. As such, uh, ILS-04 will probably, or runway four will probably be the active one because we'll be turning again into the wind over here. So let's assume that is what we're going to be given over here. So we're going to be told to land on uh, runway zero four right. It's an ILS approach, which is an airliner we're going to use, instrument landing system. So it's got a glide scope and things like that. I don't know, does it list what category it is? Cat 3B, wow, you could land in like freaking... Um, complete zero visibility storm of doom on here. Pretty incredible. Uh, it's got it's got some extra numbers there. It doesn't have an extra number under the cat 3B, but I assume that does represent the ca capabilities of this um, of this airport here. Probably something like that. Now, have we crossed eighteen thousand yet? Almost. So I'm curious to see if it automatically sets it, or if I'm going to be the person to reset the barometer here. So let's find out. <laughs> what you got for me? Just looking over here. No. But we can hit this button. Boop. And we are now um, 
We're now calibrated to standard. You can see how the altimeter changed a little bit here because we're treating different air pressure assumptions for our altimeter, and that's going to be okay. So we're still ascending. Once we do level off at 35,000 feet, we will be cruising. We'll try to hit Mach uh, 0.80. And so, again, this is the sort of apparent or indicated airspeed, and it's going to have nothing to do with anything. Uh, our actual ground speed already, you see here, uh, even at this lower altitude at 18,000 feet, our indicated airspeed is 290, but our ground speed is actually 416 which is amazing, and it is nice to be on a plane where this information is actually available, because oftentimes we uh, we don't have that kind of info. So, all right, um, right. So let's let's figure out our our arrival. Let's assume that we have that information and everything is going to be good. So, sorry, what was it? That's not the right page. This is the right page over here. Um, so let me write this down. So O four. Right. Let's assume that's what we've been given. Uh, we know for sure we're going to be coming in there, so we're going to be landing at 04 right, and we're going to be coming in from what? Well, I think IGN-1 is going to be uh, the likely approach. Again, let's take a look at the nav graph over here. So, um, where am I looking for? Right over here. Oh, stars, not SIDS, stars. So, IGN-1 would be coming in from here and then this way. And so there's JFK over here. I don't know. I, th I don't think that's that's reasonable because we're going to be coming in. We want to wrap around to the south here. So what else we got? Uh, let's rotate this. And maybe make it so we can actually see what the hell's going on. Parachute jump activity? What? That's cool. Um, okay, that's coming in from the east. Uh, do we want to rotate this? No. Okay, so this, so this Cameron uh, path is coming in from the south. So we'll be coming in this way to there. That might be your best. Pro I mean, we're we're not physically coming in from the south, but we're going to be landing, sort of going northeast. So that's that's what I'm wondering if that's what we should be using for this. I mean, we can still get vectored around. It's going to be fine. So what would happen with this case, right? We would come in here, and then we'd have to, we'd be flying past the northeast of JFK, and then we'd have to get vectored around to the south to intercept things. I don't think that makes sense. I think, I don't know, but I'm going to assume that we're going to take this, this Cameron approach, but it comes in so far south. Well, you know what? Let's let's do a little thing. Because I don't actually know what would be the most realistic and reasonable. Um, if I were to go and check my flight plans. Let me bring this up for a second here. Uh, da, 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 da. One second. All right, so if we bring up this page... So this is simbrief.com, and we can embiggen this. This is what initially set this flight. Let's say we're actually going to be arriving at 04 right over here. So yes, we'd like to load in some new SIDs and stars for this route. Um, and this still suggests coming in on IGN-1. Or we can come in on Lendi. We've got a choice over here, but we've already flown here. We didn't come through Wazi, so we're going we're gonna to do the IGN-1. Okay, that's fine. So that's what we will assume. We're going to be coming in on the... Um, IGN route over here. And then we'll sort of have to loop around the airport a little bit for our actual landing, but that's going to be fine. So we're at 22,000 feet. We're still climbing. Everything is good. Everything is excellent. Lovely. So IGN 1 over here. Okay, now I don't know. Sometimes it does this where it says invalid entry. Whoops, I didn't mean to e execute that. Um, what we're going to do is deselect this. We choose IGN 1 first and then choose the runway and execute. I don't know why that is. To me, you should be able to do an either, either, or, either order, and if you've got a good FMS, it'll actually filter the list. But yeah, if we if we unselect these, so if I select ILS 04 right first, and then select IGN-1, it says invalid entry. But if I select IGN-1, and then ILS 04 right, then it's all good. I don't know why. Anyway, let's take a look at our, um, our flight plan now. So there's going to be a de disconnect over here, and that's fine-ish. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, just have to link these together. So we can do 
Um, IGN 1, we're going to paste... Oh, hold on. Did I accidentally put in more than one flight? This something is definitely weird. So normally this is the part that's blank. No, no. It, hmm. I think, okay, first of all, I think this is the problem. We need to specify that we're going to the IGN waypoint after Yoda. not good. That is very weird. What's up here? Okay, we're making a turn. That's fine. Yeah, no, we can't delete that. Um... That is very odd. Let me cancel this. Check the flight plan. Can I delete these like weird ass discontinuities at this point? I think something may have glitched here because this should not be like this. Let's specify down here. Okay. That we want to fly to IGM. What the hell, man? Something's very odd. I've never run into this problem before. <laughs> I don't know what the solution is. Hmm. Should I be putting it in here? Hold on. Oh! I was doing derp 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 derp. You don't fix it in the goddamn flight plan, you fix it here. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me delete this. I think we're still gonna put in the um the IGN route. But let's go ahead and respecify our departure. Or arrival, sorry. Uh, IGN 1 to ILS 04 right. Execute. Alright, so the flight plan still looks all. Oh, looks better! There we go. This is what it should look like in our flight plan over here. Okay, so now I should be able to hit this IGN and move it up to cover this discontinuity. Excellent! That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna be flying from Yoda to IGN to Lolly to Dur to Lendi. Uh, we're going to fly over LaGuardia, I think, is what this is going to be. Then we're going to expect vectors at this point. Um, I guess I'll just replace the discontinuity. We can expect vectors to Zedel. There we go. And by doing this, by getting rid of the discontinuity, we also continue our descent information. So again, we're going to hit our top of flight. We'll look like probably right after ARC. And sometimes before Roddy, we will hit our top of flight of uh, flight level 350, is what's expected. And then we're going to start our descent. By the time we hit the Roddy point, we're going to be hoped to be at 30,400 feet. Then we're going to hope to drop down to 23,300 feet, and so on and so forth. Um, and our descent, we're going to be looking to descend at a speed of 290 over here. So that's, okay, that's looking, that's looking fine now. So we are, we just passed Avon, we're heading towards Extol, we got 33 nautical miles, then it comes, comes the memes, the dank memes, Cody, Ark, and then we descend from there. Okay, well we're going to put a cut in here, we'll pick up the next video sometimes later in the flight, probably once our descent has started. I think that sounds pretty okay, pretty okay. I like it. I mean, we'll probably kill ourselves to zero throttle. We might have to give a little bit of spoiler to just start cutting it. Oh, there's another plane over there. Check it out. Let's uh, zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. There it is. Hello. That's cool. Uh, if we take a look at ourselves, we actually should 
Oh, we're not actually... Oh, just a little bit. It's hard to tell. It's going to be moisture level and different things. You can tell it's windy. This is a this is a slightly turbulent flight. It's one of those unhappy... Oh, it looks lovely down here, though. Where are we? I'm, certainly, we must have crossed over the Great Lakes, and we're in New York State at this point. Uh, this is me, right over here. And yeah, so there's... there's um, I'm trying to like figure out the angles of where Toronto is and what Great Lake this would be. But I don't know, it's one of the Great Lakes. Um, and here's us flying this way. We are heading towards... They're not really listed the way I would expect. I'm looking for, like, the jetway lines. I think we're looking to intercept. It's probably here. And this is probably the Q140. I don't see the words Q140, though. I mean, God knows I'm blind half the time. But I don't see the words Q140. But I'm assuming there's something related there in terms of the jetways. I don't know what this guy's doing. Woo! I mean, the AI planes, they just get thrown in and, like, generated. And they have silly flights around. So you're not alone if you want to e include them. Um, but yeah, so we're going to fly this way, we're going to do that. That's the guy we just saw, so now he's slightly over to our right. There he is. And that, and flying above us. So he's mid-flight. Wow, this, uh, this is super shaky. Whew! There's some serious wind going on here. We take a look at the weather report, like, over here. There's no, as far as I can tell, there's no way to ask for a METAR report from the ATC in uh, X-Plane. So I've got it set up to match real-world conditions right now as I'm recording it. Yeah, 30 no 36 knots over here. Now this is, I think this is when it starts. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's like this and below. Oh, probably. There we go. I think it might be this and below or just around here, but look at above here. We got 72 knots. Um, this is the direction that it's going in. So it's coming out of the east and going towards the west. I think that's right. Okay. We are flying somewhat into the east. So this is slowing us a little bit. Uh, but not too much. Man, that is sick windy. Mild turbulence over here. It's probably the sort of stuff that's impacting us here. I don't actually know how the um, the, the wind effectively works. Like, what is the wind here? Is it an average between these two? Or is it, we're above here, so it's 36? Or is it, we're, we're below here in 72? If we went above this, would there be any wind? I mean, there must be. I'm betting it averages based on distance between the different wind layers, but I don't actually know. Anyway, we can just resume the flight without any changes. Autopilot here is trying to keep us trimmed for the climb over here trying to maintain that 290 flight level or the 290 speed and that's why we're doing the level change here so we're just climbing with that and we continue to climb so we will put a cut in here we'll come back and rejoin the flight when we're in the descent thanks for watching see you next time